So for the past year, I've been reviewing different video editing software, some that you've liked and others that you didn't. Well, today I'm going to rank all of them based on my personal picks. Now for this tier list, which I'm sure you know how it works, the higher the ranking, the better it is. However, I'm just going to include the editing software that I have reviewed in the series. So here's all of them. First up, we have VSDC, and I have very fond memories of this editing software. For now, I guess we could put it at B tier. I feel like once I start rating the other editing softwares, I should get a better feel for this. But the thing with VSDC is that I know a lot of you like it. I saw all the comments on the review that I did on this software, but I brought it back for some versus episodes and I saw that a lot of you actually liked it. It has more advanced features, which I do agree with. It's really cool. I think it's just the layout that does it for me. It's, it's a little bit different. But for now, I think B tier is a solid choice. So once I'm done with all of these i might just rearrange them at the end and show you guys the final ranking next up we have filmy and if you don't know what filmy is I don't blame you. It's one of those videos that didn't really get too many views, but it's editing software that this company sent me and told me about it. And I saw other people reviewing it and I thought it was a pretty good idea. And I actually did a, a few giveaways with this one. It's a paid software. And that's the thing, if it wasn't a paid software, I feel that it was gonna be ranked higher. Now you can use it for free. I just believe that it would just have a watermark so for now, I'm just going to put it at C tier. And the thing is that aesthetically, I really like it. I, I like the idea. I like how it looks. It's just like it has so many templates. I guess you have to pay for it. In this list, you can see so many other editing softwares that are for free and are so more advanced. But yeah, I think for now, we're just going to leave that at C tier. The next big one is DaVinci Resolve. And I think every single one of us know what DaVinci Resolve is. Instant S tier. And I'm not only putting it at S tier just because it's my own video editing software and I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's really smooth, almost no hiccups whatsoever, and the exporting times are completely insane. They're, they're pretty fast. But the thing is that DaVinci Resolve does have a little bit of limits, especially in the effects, but it's like no problem whatsoever. And I know that they have the studio version, but honestly, like the free version, the Resolve version is everything you need in terms of looking for a good editing software. And yeah, instant S tier, especially for value, how much value this editing program, this editing software is providing you. So yeah, I recommend it to anyone who's looking for a free editing software. So yeah, S tier for DaVinci she resolve. The next one would be Olive. Now this one, I, when I first heard about Olive, I thought it was just going to be a regular open source editor, but actually a lot of people enjoy this one. And the thing is, it's pretty difficult to rank this one because I've been keeping an eye on it, especially the second version of Olive, but it doesn't look like they've done any work. It still looks like it's in development after a year. And I don't know if I would recommend the first version. The first version is like a basic editor and it's a good one, don't get me wrong, but I just haven't had enough time with it. You know, that video was just focused on the second version, but I did mention the first version, which was a little bit more stable. And the main problem with this one is the stability and how compatible it is on different operating systems. So for now, I would put it on the same rank as Filmy, but that might change once I start organizing. But we got six left. The next one we have is Hit Film Express, which is like, by the way, have any of you noticed the new logo that they have for, for Hit Film Express? It's pretty interesting. The other one was more like a crystallized uh, design, but this one is like more a 2D, but it's just surprising that they changed the logo and stuff. So yeah. Hail Film Express, I would have to put that in A tier, an instant A tier. And I'll tell you why. It has so many other advanced features similar to DaVinci Resolve in the way that they're both free. Hail Film Express does also have some turned off features if you get the free version. But honestly, the only reason I put it below DaVinci Resolve in S tier is because I feel that is DaVinci Resolve is just a little bit more advanced. But honestly, I feel like they can be on the same playing field and I feel comfortable leaving a uh, hit film in A tier. So yeah, that's all I have to say about Hit Film Express. Moving on to the next one, OpenShot. Uh, a lot of you roasted me in the comments um, by saying uh, video editor uh too many times which i do agree now that i saw it yeah sometimes i just say words sometimes i just say words without thinking especially when i'm doing videos so let's do open shot i don't know if i should explain myself or not <laughs> 
OpenShot is a good video editor. The thing is that it's free, it's open source software, but it is super basic. And I mean the most basic editing software. It almost has no editing tools per se, like DaVinci Resolve or HitFilm. It's just more like a importing and exporting of clips, putting them together like side by side. But the truth is that it already has some saved presets for effects and a timeline in a preview screen that you can see the edit but from there that's all it offers it doesn't have any other advanced functionality and that is why for now i have to put it at d tier uh blender Ooh, this one was really dicey and for what it is blender is a great tool like for vfx for modeling and other things but i never knew that they had video editing capabilities until someone in the comments in one of my videos or in one of the community posts by the way if you're not checking the community tab do that i always do polls and updates on videos and stuff so if you guys want to interact with me more and um, with each other community posts is the way to go but blender surprised me because i did not know it had video editing capabilities and once i tried it i wasn't so convinced that it was going to be a very easy system to follow because it just looks so different i would almost compare it to vsdc and the way it functions but like even vsdc has a more structured outline for video editing in the way that blender doesn't and i think in the video in the review video i said that I feel like Blender concentrates more on its focus on uh, VFX and modeling and rendering and stuff like that instead of the video editing aspect and I might have to give this D tier as well. Not because it's super basic like OpenShot, it's because it's really complex but I don't think Blender's main focus is on video editing as it is on like 2D, 3D modeling and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, we have to put that in D tier. Lightworks. Lightworks is an interesting one. It's one of the earliest video editing software that I also used. Uh, not that I, not that I recall, it hasn't changed that much. The only con with this one, honestly, the only con was that it was capped in the free version to export 720p. But yeah, I don't know if they updated it. Whoever of you uses Lightworks um, can let me know. But yeah, the only con with this one is that it caps it at 720p. So honestly, I would say uh, C tier. Now, if I'm wrong, if they update it before I made this video and I just didn't see it, I would put it at B tier because it's a functional video editing software. Don't get me wrong. But for now, I'm just have to put it at C tier. Caden Live. Caden Live, I know exactly where this goes. B tier. And let me explain why. Caden Live does have its issues with bugs, lags, and freezes and stuff like that. I've seen so many different reports and um, other videos on Caden Live. But the thing is that I don't want to say those are isolated experiences because for me, once I was using Caden Live, I did not go through that and I didn't use it on the Mac. I didn't use it on the higher end computer. I used it on the Windows operating system on a pretty low spec computer and it didn't give me any problems at all. But Caden Live, it still has a lot of issues to work out but it's totally usable and i feel pretty comfortable ranking it with b tier just because it's still functional it still offers different effects different filters different tools it's just that some of the implementation of it it's still pretty weird and it has some stability issues but i haven't experienced those so far so yeah b tier would be solid to go and then we have arrived to the most popular editing software shortcut and this is where it might get difficult for me it's definitely not C tier. The problem is that if I put it in A tier, a lot of people would argue that BSDC would be more advanced if I put it in A tier, meaning that I would have to drag BSDC onto A tier with Shotcut or just leave Shotcut in B tier and put BSDC with HitFilm in A tier. Depending on how you use Shotcut in VSDC, your ranking might be different. I use Shotcut way more than I use VSDC. And I know that VSDC has, um, I think they have really good tracking, if I'm not mistaken. But I feel Shotcut is a little bit more versatile in terms of it's beginner friendly, but you can also make some pretty advanced things. And if you guys haven't seen a video of me where I take the challenge to make one of my most recent video editing style as the one you see when I've used my preferred editor and basically replicate my style in Shotcut, you should go see that. 
But yeah, I'm having trouble. I was originally thinking putting VSDC in A tier, but I don't know if Shotcut is a contender with it, just because I might prefer it a little bit. But honestly, I feel that it does contend with Shotcut at least, and HitFilm, even though I think HitFilm is a little bit more superior. And I told myself I knew that I was gonna have a little bit more difficulty ranking all of these, but I think that this is a solid list. But I do feel that Shotcut is a little bit more simpler, but it's definitely in this level, especially on how good and how advanced it is compared to the other open source editing softwares. But yeah, I, I think I do agree with this list. So yeah, this is my ranking. This is my ranking. And hopefully you enjoyed this type of laid back video, especially when I'm talking about my rankings and stuff. But yeah, so this is my list for this year. And remember, these editing softwares always have new updates that I can always go back and review. And hopefully next year, these rankings might look a little different. Don't forget to comment down below your own tier list and let me know which ones have been your favorite or least favorite. And feel free to stick around and subscribe to see even more videos. But that's it for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.